Hi, I'm Alex, and in this video, we are going to show the third wave pre built solution for synchronizing Shopify orders with SAP Business One. The solution is configured using the BizWeaver integration and process automation application. We will cover how our solution connects and acquires orders via the Shopify API, provides the essential data mappings to both systems out of the box, stages the data prior to updating SAP provides runtime error monitoring and correction, and provides easy access for customizations. Now, to start, we are gonna go and look at our Shopify orders to staging. And what that is, is we're taking our orders from Shopify, and we're gonna be staging them into a staging table. The reason we use staging tables is because it's a very proven solution to a very common problem. And the common problem to not using staging tables is that when you're mapping data it's very rigid and you cannot control it with the staging table you can control the data that's going into sap or even out to shopify with your integration so it provides a flexible framework it's very easy to modify so you do not need to have in-depth knowledge of the shopify api or even um, SQL, it can all just be done with a few clicks or even a limited understanding of both of those concepts. And also you can do it all yourself. There's no need to call anybody and ask them to do this for you or to modify your workflow. You can do it all yourself within a couple easy steps. Now to see how simple it is to update an error coming in from Shopify to our SAP instance. Say for example, we have an order that has an issue on it that we wanna update. It's as simple as going into our Versago interface, uh, clicking refine results and seeing that there's an error on order, the billing state code is too long or empty. Now, this interface is something that is pre-built for you. You can just, you get it with your installation of BizWeaver and you just can immediately connect with it, making any changes you want. You would go to this update field you can see that the original value was blank. We enter a new value that will put the state there and just hit save and close. And once that's submitted, it's all ready to go and it's gonna to try to resubmit that to SAP. That's as easy as it gets for a business trying to manage their integration without getting too technical. And to change these reports to show whatever you want is as simple as a couple of clicks. Now with this workflow, the first thing we do is we're getting the orders from Shopify. It's very simple, and with you, if you wanted to go ahead and modify this, all you had to do is replace this portion of the URI for the API call, and it would be almost ready to go. The next thing you'd have to do is just plug in two lines from Shopify into our connection manager. And our connection manager, the great thing about it is all you have to do is enter two lines. So it's just the username and the password, and that is directly set up right in BizWeaver. It's ready to go. There's nothing that you need to do uh, other than that, and you can make a get call into Shopify to start grabbing your orders. Now, we use these responses from the API as our templates. Now, it's as simple as this get command or uh, you can go into the Shopify documentation and they will provide you with this, this response so you can use it as a template for our next step, which then takes this JSON file and it reads it so BizWeaver can then input it into our staging table. So it will take this JSON file so we can just, we can just copy this data and paste it into a text file to use as a template and that's in our next step. And we take the output string of our Shopify get orders and to get that output string variable is we go hit F4. And once F4 is pressed, this file will be presented. You select the step you want, and then you just select output string and output string is the data uh, that comes in response to your API call. Then you take this template section and you would just find the template you want. In most cases, you would just save it into our bit program data BizWeavers folder, and you would find the template that you want to use. So in this case, it's the Shopify orders template, and it takes that JSON file and breaks it down to a columns and field uh, so it can loop through or get all the data that is needed in here. So it makes it very easy to understand how the data is being read. So after this is being fed into here, we loop through the data, 
We then check to make sure there are no duplicates. And if there are no duplicates, we will then enter, get that single order. We'll specify that single order and then we'll go through the rest of the workflow or we'll skip over it and then loop through the next one and the next one and the next one. And if there are duplicates, it's going to then end the workflow. And if there are no duplicates, it's going to add those to our staging table. Now, once again, if there are no duplicates, we're going to go ahead and then step into the get single order from Shopify. This once again, you're just replacing the single URL from your Shopify store. It's provided to you, nothing you have to do. We're going to read that single order. So it's only ringing up one part of that. And when it breaks down those, those fields in that JSON string, we can then add it to our staging table, which is just using those variables from that step and then putting them over into uh, just a simple pre-constructed insert statement that's already done for you. But you can add to it when if you want to add more or if you want to remove them. It makes it super easy to be modified. The next thing is we're just going to read those lines. And the great thing about our file reader here is that it has multiple, uh, if your JSON has multiple levels and you only want to read a single level, you can just come in here, click on this select objects for formatting, and you can just click here on order lines. And what that does is it will only select that portion of the JSON, JSON file so you know it's interacting only with that level. And we have, we're using the same template, but it just it only grabs the data from there, which once again, makes it very easy to modify so you know uh, where you're getting the data from. We then generate a line number and we loop through all those items and we add them to our detail staging table. So say if you wanted to add more uh, detail to the item or you wanted to remove some, you can just do it yourself by opening this and just deleting and removing what you don't want. It's a very simple and easy way to modify and you don't need to bother anybody to get it done. And note that this video doesn't only cover how to stage the data from Shopify. It also shows you in the second half of it, how to get it into SAP in a format that you'd like. So we enable you to make sure you can take the data and use it and manipulate it and do what you want with it to make this integration your own. That's the best part about using BizWeaver and these integrations. We then read the billing, shipping, and customer data, and we insert that into our staging table. Once again, you do not have to use this predefined mapping that we have. You can just change how you want it, but I break these these three steps over into, uh, like I said, the billing, shipping, and read customer, so we know exactly what's coming in those steps, but you can do it all in one. And we then, like I said, insert that into our staging table to make sure we have what we want. It then gets the location, reads the location, and updates that location in our staging tables. And the reason we get the location from Shopify is that items can have different locations in the Shopify store. And we have found that generally saving that location is good if you are mapping it into different areas and you need the location to update the order or the item. So we save that location in our staging table connected to that order to make sure we understand where it came from. The next part of our workflow that is really great is we have this view and the view checks the order that has been staged against very common things that fail to be added to SAP. So after the Shopify API, we manipulate the data, we add it to the staging table. And during this whole integration process, we want to then uh, get set it up and send it to SAP. Well, we can actually do that with uh, some warnings set up. So if it fails on very basic criteria, it doesn't have to hold up the rest of your orders. It will then just stop that single order and then move on to the next one. And if that one's good, it will just go ahead and keep passing through until we're done with all the orders. So the great thing is this view that it checks these very common things that items that orders fail going into SAP. Uh, once that's done, if, if there are no uh, more orders, it will end this loop end our decision and then end our orders workflow staging and then it will go into the next workflow which is getting orders and adding them to sap so now opening the workflow we're going to start mapping our staged orders into sap we're going to get all those cleared orders from their staging table and we're going to then loop through them getting all the details for a single order the great thing about this is we can now and change the items we are getting modify it, 
add new stuff and make it very easy to make this fit your business. We then map the order into SAP and we find that during this integration process with how many we've done from the Shopify integration to SAP, the most common thing people do is they want to map an address extension to their order. And the reason for this is that we don't have to add every single customer that gets that buys something on your website, on your Shopify site. So what we do is we, we have the most common documents or order uh, lines mapped. We have the line items for the order mapped, and then we have the address extension. We then map this to a generic BP called a web customer, and it will then be easier to manage everybody who gets added to SAP instance. Now, if you wanted to change this, we could have then customers who are already existing in your account go ahead and move through and add the order to SAP connected to their business partner, or if uh, they weren't, it would then map the new business partner into SAP, then add the order connected to that new business partner created. This framework is very flexible. This uh, data is very easy to move and manipulate. So you don't have to constantly figure out what's going on or connect with somebody from the from our company to do this. If you want to do it yourself, it's very, very simple. Now, from there, we update that order to SAP. Once that order is sent to SAP, if it is successful, because there are still parts of the order that can fail here. So for example, the SAP DI API or the SAP service layer is down or the SAP server, the uh, server is down, it is possible that the order won't get mapped. So we have another fail safe put in here to stop the order from just going off into the uh, into the ether, we go ahead and we flag it for failure. And then you can review those failures and then change them, reflag them to be ready to put in the SAP, or you can update. It will just update that it was successful and it will just move on and mark the order as successful in the database ready for the next step, which is fulfillment. And remember when an order fails going into SAP, from the Shopify integration, it will immediately be flagged and go onto our Versago page where you then can correct the order and send it back into SAP automatically. From the beginning to the end of this integration, we start with orders being staged from the Shopify API. We then check to make sure there's no errors and the most common ones to make sure that they get pushed out or corrected before adding to SAP. We then add those orders to SAP, making sure the data is very flexible to be updated or changed if you want to change what you want to do and then flag it to make sure there are no other errors or if it was successful in the staging table once it's done. So this framework makes your integration very unique to you and it also makes this integration very simple for any business to adopt. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and have a wonderful day.